Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, and the crew is strong. The crew is wise. And we have everyone here. It's been a great hangout so far. And before we went too far, I was like, you know what? We got to record some stuff, guys. Uh, we've been talking about all kinds of good stuff. A little bit of art. So we got some good stuff coming. Not Art Wagner. Art, as in logos. Cool stuff coming out. T-shirts, merch, oh, some good stuff. So stick tight for that. Um, today, uh, we're going to be looking at some lunars. I have a few lunars that I want to show off. And the reason I want to show the reason I picked these lunars is they all look different. I realized in my display cabinet, I have about, I think it was 13 lunar slices that all look different. There's a few that look alike on top of that, but there's 13 of them that look really different from each other. So I decided, you know what? I have some inventory of lunars that uh, I'd love to show you guys. These means that these are available for purchase um, that don't look like each other okay this first is nwa um 17679 and i love this one because i think it looks like an animal here we'll take this out does anyone see an animal there are you pulling magic bunnies out of your magic hat topher there that's we cool go. <laughs> happy, hippity, happy. yeah we got a so this is when you I guess when, when you think of a felpathic breccia, a moon rock, this is like the most standard, I don't want to call it run of the mill but, or average or ordinary, but like this is a really beautiful dark lunar felpathic breccia, just full of class. And the, it has a lot of white ones in there as well. It's just a beautiful, beautiful lunar meteorite. And keep this in mind as we go through these other ones, because this is the last time you're going to see one that looks like this tonight. But this one is 42 grams, NWA 17679. And really beautiful, I think. Now, this one does have white and dark and breccia but look at the size comparison of the of the class this one back here is nwa 17502 and it actually almost looks like a ukraine in my opinion i have some ukraites that look very similar to this and uh, yeah, so be careful when you're uh, when you're buying meteorites. You might be buying a meteorite as a lunar, but it's really a Ukraine. So just it pays to know. But you can see a little bit of holes down here in the where the melt is. Just a beautiful lunar. Um, now those are the normal looking felpathic breccia, if you will. This next one is a kind of a special one. This is uh, from Ajbadia, Libya. Um, this is Weed El Ham, and it is a aqueously altered lunar. So does anyone remember or know a aqueously altered lunar that looks extremely similar to this? It begins with a T, I think. I can't it remember. It does. I can't remember the name. Yeah. Tassadina, or I can't remember it. Zero, zero, 001, I think. Uh, wow, good job. The, that's Chris, the new guy. Yeah. We're going to go to him. He's going to show off some lunar later on. Tisserlatine. Tisserlatine, there we go. <laughs> yes, and there it is. These are um, paired material. I'm almost positive that they're paired officially in the Met Bowl but they are the exact same material, as you can see. Um, but yeah, good on you for that one. Yeah, so this is aquously altered um, and doesn't look anything like the other ones. Like we we're looking at black and white. Now all of a sudden we're looking at grays, a little bit of tannish color. I mean, when you compare the color, it's tan, gray. It's definitely not as brecciated, there's more melt and 
Um, now we're going to go to, this is a fragmental brexia. Now we're going to go to one that I cannot wait for it to be published in the Met Bowl because I want to know exactly what it's published as. I have it as a uh, lunar troctolite, 17509. And this is a big one. This is a nice one. This one is, let me see here, 63, no, 42 grams. Yeah, a 42 gram troctolite. I believe it's going to be a troctolitic melt because it has really big melt patches in there. And some of these, a lot of these are really good backlit. They have translucent places, class. Lots of detail in there as well. But look at the rivers of melt. That should be on our bingo card, guys. All right, so those are the four lunars I want to share with you. And the reason is they all look totally different. Um, so I thought it was super interesting to because you don't want to, we don't want to ever get ourselves our mind in, in a box where we think it all has to be one way. Um, so I'm just trying to keep everyone's mind open and show off some beautiful meteorites from space. So I've, I've asked uh, the crew, I think four guys or so, yeah, four are gonna show us some uh, of their lunar samples. So let's see if they're going to be fragmental, uh, what type they're gonna be, and what type they're gonna look like, if they're gonna be similar to any of these. Yeah. Art, thank you, man, I appreciate you sharing it with us. And, that, and it's very cool to see the largest lunar in your collection. And it seems like you did a little bit of research before you did show and tell, so I really appreciate that. Thanks. Chris Sanders, you put your hand up last. Well, we'll go to you first. What's up, buddy? What do you have, man? Hey, well, you said um, you said you didn't want to steal anybody's thunder. I bring my own thunder, but Topher, I like to think <laughs> you're the lightning that, uh, well, you don't, get them, you don't get one without the other. So um, you mentioned you. Fra fragmental uh, brescia, and um, I've got a little piece of that to show off here. Please. So this guy is NWA 14577. It is a fragmental brescia, um, really nice and dark and textured on the outside. This is uh, my second favorite lunar in my collection, and I'll show you, I'll flip it over and show you why. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, this one is... Um, when I have people, when I show people my shelf of, of like lunar and Martian stuff, this is the one that always grabs the attention. And it's, I mean, it looks, it looks like the night sky, right? Like it's, yeah. it's just so, so beautiful with the, you know, on the black with the white little clasps all over it. And um, this is not, this is my second lunar I ever bought. And it was the one that I, I didn't know a lunar could, could look so beautiful. Um yeah. So it's just it's just a stunner, and I, I find myself just I was actually just taking some new high res photos of it tonight. I just get lost in this one. Oh, very cool! I could see why. It looks like a Jackson Pollock painting over there. Yeah, it looks like paint splatters, right? It's it's yeah. wild. Yeah, Sue, I threw that in just for you. Um, wow, that's awesome. thanks. The, the, the thing that it's it's a it's a uh, end cut. Can I can we see the other side of it again? Oh, the outside looks fresh though, man. Congrats. It's, well, that's beautiful, dude. That is absolutely beautiful. Thanks for sharing it with us. I super appreciate that. And it, it does look like uh, the Starry Night uh, and Jackson, a Jackson Pollock take on Starry Night. So very cool. Thank you. Um, we are going to roll the dice, but we were successful last time. The newest member. We, he, we can only refer to him as the newest member or the newbie for so long until someone else. And I don't even know if he qualifies or if it's Anthony, but we have Chris in the house. Chris, what's up, buddy? Hey. Hey, hey everybody. Yeah, so what I want to show is uh, you, you had already brought up a troctolite, and uh, that's what I have here. It's my uh, newest acquisition. It's a little over three grams. And it's called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Tuat, T-O-U-A-T, zero, oh, zero, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, zero, zero, eight. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And it's a, so it's a troctolite melt breccia I got from uh, Streaming Meteorites, Matt Stream. Uh, and kind of cheating here, reading the notes that troctolites in general are uh, composed primarily of olivine and, um, 
Oh, geez. Where did I leave my notes? <laughs> Olivine and plagioclase. Magnesium sweet rocks that are from the lunar mantle. The, so, the mantle is deeper down. So that's deeper like down the below the crust. Yeah. There's a couple of sim similar examples brought back on Apollo's 12 and 17. Mm -hmm. So this, this matched some of the return samples you were saying? I guess, yeah. It's, well, it's a troctolite. And they were interested in particularly a couple of troctolite. There's one famous, I don't recall the number of Apollo 17. I don't know why it looks a little bit more green in that video than it really is. So it's just a lighting artifact mm -hmm. there. That looks more actual the way it is now. Yeah. So yeah, creamy gray, like yeah. Ar army yeah. creamy gray is the only way I can describe it. And it almost looks like, and I looked up in, into it more, that there are some like triple junctions in some of the troctolites mm. around. So if you look at you wow, know, yeah, angles, you can kind of pick that out. So I thought it was interesting. I do have a few fragmentals and uh, feldpathic crutches. The one I want behind you, the star on my show. Yeah, well, that's that's the starry night, of course, behind me. Mm -hmm. But my uh, the big one I have not here now, and I'll get a video on it later uh, from Matt Stream too. One six four eight six. He calls it the everything rare lunar because it has a lot of, a lot of <laughs> different stuff in it. Uh, nice. It actually has blue in it, some blue colors. Wow. which they think is from magnesium, but it's an interesting one. That's 29 grams. That's the highlight of mine, but this one's my newest and it's, I think it's kind of cool. Yes. Very cool. I, I appreciate you sharing it with us. And again, it's, it's not your standard black and white, uh, grayscale lunar. It, you got a bunch of army green in there. So good on you for bringing a rare meteorite to the game. Appreciate it, bud. I knew about NWA 5,000 as one of the mm -hmm. earlier lunars um and i looked up it's like currently there are 754 lunars in the metal is a gabbro that is light in color due to a high concentration of plagioclast feldspar thank you chris chris monk the factoid man thank you very much the monk man cometh um and I appreciate you sharing it with us, Jim. I knew the second you shown exactly what it was, NWA 5000, the, the legendary, legendary lunar. It's been studied. Well, I don't know how true this is now because we have, you know, pink splenels. We have uh, uh, um, hyd hydrated uh, uh, lunars. Um, but it was at one time the most studied lunar available. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very rare to see a piece over a gram. The uh, main mass holders, the brothers, decided to cut it up and they put one gram pieces. Uh, anything less than a gram was up on auction. Anything above a gram had a fixed price. So you'll see a lot of people out there with 0.97 gram pieces. <laughs> <laughs> the write-up's pretty interesting, Topher. And they, it talks about the color, the light colored. But it also mentions something about troilite in it. That is it. Could that be referring to the metal at all? Yes, that that is the uh, the metal. And there actually is. I was reading the paper the other day. There actually is a little bit of metal that's actually from the moon. So not necessarily every bit of metal is from impactor. There is yeah. a tiny amount oh. from the moon as well. It says some gabbro class have shock injection veins composed mostly of glass containing myriad fine troilite blebs. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Collecting our, our lunar samples, we can collect them from geographically around the moon as well as depth-wise around the moon. Um, one of the deepest guys I know is Dave Pinsky. Dave, how are you? I am Thanks just fine. I have one that I don't think was shown, so let me uh, share. So this is uh, oh. in, I'm sorry, Gadamus 004. It is a lunar anorthosite. Uh, and the most interesting thing about this is that it uh, is believed to uh, be very similar to Apollo 16 uh, material. And Apollo 16 landed in the Discardus Highlands of the moon. And that's a reason, they chose that reason to explore lunar highlands, which are geologically older and, and more heavily cratered than the Mare. Uh, and so you see all these white uh, class in there that are anorthosite, the darker regions I'm assuming are uh, shock. 
and uh, it's it's one of the most attractive meteorites, I think. And it, it's a bit different than the uh, breccias that, uh, uh, specifically the, the first one that Topher shown. Uh, and I have a similar one like that, and I like all of them, but there's something really interesting and special about these uh, that I really, really like. So uh, that's the one I have. Very cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. And I know you probably use that when you talk to people about uh, the moon uh, in your daily life. So it's yes, it's cool. yeah. That that's a good one to show and outreach and all. So, but I know the one that uh, Topher has shown, the one that has aqueous uh, alteration, uh, not only fluoresces but it phosphoresces. It it uh, holds a, a little bit of light and then it fades down. Uh, that some, yeah. some have more than others. Yeah, and that, that's, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And that's yeah. another cool thing about lunar. Get it when you buy a lunar, you can backlight it if it's cut thin enough and maybe you get lucky. You can also put different wavelengths of blacklight, short wavelength, long wavelength, and get different uh, minerals to react and fluoresce and phosphoresce. Did I say mm -hmm. that correct? I, yeah. Okay, thanks. We have Anthony, the old new guy. <laughs> hey what's up so i have something that's currently under classification so i thought it might be cool to show it because it is a little bit different colored um dare i say earth tones um, uh -oh. <laughs> and i got it from uh zach over at minnesota minnesota meteorites oh wow what do we think about that it looks like some of the class have uh, almost like troctolitic color to them. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow. Yeah, it, some of those class look green. And as we were discussing earlier, like the, the, ar the light uh, army green color is troctolitic. But if you look down there on the, on the bottom at like 7 o'clock, that entire area there is all mm -hmm. black and white class like we like we see in other lunar samples yeah. so i think this has dual lithography on it to begin with mm -hmm. lithology mm -hmm. sorry well thank you very much anthony appreciate it and uh, uh we hinted earlier in the evening that we have some new art coming soon so i thank you in advance for your help with that buddy boy it doesn't get old every yeah. even though i i have slices of the moon here and there in an inventory in my collection and we're constantly touching them showing them off and using them as educational pieces it, yeah. it doesn't get old it, it doesn't no. escape me that i'm holding a piece of the moon you look up in the sky and you, and you see it no. uh if you if you like lunars search my channel for the word lunar or moon and you'll learn a lot more uh, if you want to learn the science and the chemistry of the moon you can look for a uh, video with daniel shake in it he's uh, going through the classification process of some lunars um, and that's more a deep dive scientist. Typically, this was more an art display. So um, thank you guys very much for joining us today. And we got some really exciting stuff around the horizon for you. So stay tuned and see you next week, guys. Bye-bye. The Legendary Lunar.